And as you mentioned, putting uh, players and, and athletes, young athletes in positions where they're under stress. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, the importance of that? Yeah. I mean, you know, I have, uh, you know, two young athletes in my own family now and my, you know, my, my daughter and my son are both playing and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure they're going to be the type of players that I had at Eastern, but they both love the game and they're, and they're, you know, they're putting a lot into it. And, and certainly I think, you know, one of the keys that at all levels, even in my Ryerson program is still being able to play some demands, right? It's, it's being excellent is not easy. Uh, it's challenging mentally more even than physically at times. And, you know, can you create that convi- environment in practice? You know, can you create that environment in training? So we're constantly trying to push our athletes, and we were at that point in time, to just be able to play and train at a, at a level that's a little harder than what they would normally get in another place or what they would normally see in another place. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do that, you know, whether that's creating a, myself as a distraction, um, you know, just by with my own intensity and my le- the level of my sound and sometimes you're getting on them and you're putting them in places where they're not comfortable. Sometimes it's the structure of a drill. Sometimes it's the, the competitiveness of a particular drill. But certainly, um, you know, I, I'm a strong believer that, you know, development doesn't come within your comfort zone. It doesn't, it's not easy. It's something that you've got to be pushed. And, um, you know, the best athletes are so, you know, they can kind of push themselves. Um, but often they have to learn those traits and they have to learn, you know, gain those habits. And that usually takes a coach. And fortunately for me, when I was at Eastern, we had, you know, a community of coaches that were all committed the same way. And it it made it really, really easy for us to start to pump out really high level talent. Yeah. As you mentioned, what an incredible run, not, not only your run there, but just the school in general was just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, place. And if we continue this conversation and shift towards performing under pressure, now, obviously, a couple of years ago, 2017, as the head coach of the U19 Canada Basketball, you know, you guys traveled over to Egypt and had a obviously a huge win against Team USA in the semifinal, and of course, uh, beating Italy in the in the historic win there for for Team Canada. You know, what was that like um, in preparation for for playing Team USA in that semifinal? Yeah, it's interesting because you know I, I think it's. It's no different than playing France the day before. It was no different than playing the Angola two days before that. I mean, you know, our preparation is, at least for, for my teams, is you know pretty uniform. It, it doesn't change dramatically um, because we don't really want to make one game bigger than any other game. I mean, it's just another game. But certainly I think that prepares us for those moments are that we're intentional in talking about them before they come. Uh, we've had a, we had a lot of heartbreak over the years before we got to that world championship win. You know, we'd lost in uh, a number of tournaments in the final eight and couldn't make that jump to uh, to a, a semifinal and a, and a medal shot. We did it in 2010 with the uh, cadet team that I coached, the U17 team that I coached in Hamburg, and that was you know almost just almost an accident. Like we didn't realize what we were doing, but we had this great talent and you know Wiggins and Pangos and Anthony Bennett. We had. Nick Stauskas, we had, you know, we had so many great players that we weren't even aware. We weren't even know, you know, sure that they were any good. And we went there and had this historic result. And then from there, we had a lot of heartache. And I think that those failures, um, you know, those opportunities to come close and not make it really, really made us think about how we were doing things and how we could deliver it in a more uh, balanced way, I guess, if you could call it that. Mm-hmm. And, um and then we really talked about it. You know, we talked about, you know, what our goal was, how we were going to get there. And, um, you know, our athletes were part of it. We had a theme that overlied our, all of our preparation. And we just drew upon those themes. We drew upon those conversations. That was probably the biggest thing that we did. And, um, you know, we had a saying that we used when we were in Cairo. Um, and I got it from my mentor, George Raveling. You know, and I was, I was talking to him prior to we uh, to the tournament and said, hey, you know, coach, we've got this, you know, this team and, you know, we're missing all these guys. I mean, we took a, we took a team there that was missing probably 10 of our top, you know, 15 players in that age group on, in our kind of depth chart. Incredible. So it, it certainly wasn't our A group, but we had a lot of character kids. And so I was asking Coach Ross, you, know, you know, what do you think? How should I deal with this? Like, you know, we're missing all these guys. Guys aren't playing, different reasons. And he said, well, we have a saying at Nike, um, you know, and he goes, I don't understand why why guys wouldn't play because we have a saying at Nike, when the world is watching, be there. And I just love the saying. I just love the slogan and and we kind of adopted it. And it was really for us more about just being present, 
and just, you know, taking the group that we have and not getting caught up in all the distractions back home of, you know, who's playing, who's not playing. Are we going to be any good? Oh, you know, expectations um, from within and from outside. And it was really just about, Hey, we're here. We are, we've got this great stage, you know, where, where the world is watching and let's just, let's just enjoy it. Let's just be here. Let's just be present. And, um, we just kept going back to those themes and just really, I think it, you know, it just relieved a tremendous amount of pressure that we put upon ourselves and just allowed us to perform. Yeah. It's incredible. The, the win obviously over team USA. And then of course you mentioned that preparation there, but it's obviously something that often happens after a big win like that is, you know, a bit of a letdown in, in the next game, the subsequent game, which was the final, you know, you talk about preparation. How do, how do you keep the team, um, on that note, how do you keep the team performing at that same level after such a big win um, leading into that final game? I mean, often teams are reflective of, you know, the character, the players that you have on them. And, uh, you know, I said to Steve Kunchalski, who was my mentor coach, and he's legendary here in Canada when we were in the locker room, and I was very calm and relaxed, and he was the last guy that I walked out with before we played the final. I said, Coach, there's no way we're going to lose this game. And, you know, he was a little bit surprised by me saying that because I'm usually not very, you know, cocky or anything like that. And it wasn't meant to be that type of statement. It was just the level of confidence that I had. And it was really reflective of, you know, Abu Kijab and RJ Barrett and Danilo Duricic and all the players that we had on that team. There was just no way those guys were going to come out and have anything but, you know, their best effort. Like there was no settling. We, we understood how close we were. Um, we knew what we had to do to get the job done and, and we just went out and did it. And it was kind of clinical really in, in the final, I, the, the big game, the big one that we had to overcome the hurdle was our, our quarterfinal against France. It was a very, very strong French team. And, uh, you know, we found a way to mix it up and do some things, do some things down the stretch that help us win that game. But after that, it became just, you know, it was all gravy after that. It was all just a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, the kids, even though they were young, they handled it tremendously. And as a coach during that uh, a game like that quarterfinal, you know, in terms of applying some of the the tactical strategies that might be required to to shift the balance of a game, where's that balance between kind of letting the plan play out and then finding those spots to uh, to make an adjustment? You know, I think that's that kind of that art of coaching. I think that's the thing that you can't really you know qualify or quantify. It's it's a feel thing. There's intuition there. It's you know, when do you change a defense? Uh, when do you run a particular action or a play? Or when do you make a substitution that maybe is a little surprising because a guy really hasn't gotten into a game and he's low on your depth chart and you just kind of feel like, you know, he's going to be able to come in and make a contribution. And uh, we had to do a number of that, a number of those actions in that game against France. And we mixed our defenses a lot. Uh, we made some key substitutions that I think paid, uh, you know, paid dividends. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, against France, it really did. It was a great win for us. And you talked about the build-up to the, that championship and some of those losses along the way, you know, after 2010. So if we shift gears here and talk about failure, you know, what for yourself, uh, you know, can you share a lesson that you learned through failure as a coach uh, that's really helped to, uh, you know, to provide you some, um, you know, a mindset or skills that you lean on today when you're coaching? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's in this business, I mean, there's always failure. You know, there's failure every season. Uh, there's failure with every team. Uh, and I've been in this 25 years now. I've had one undefeated team, and that was – and we had still lost. We lost some games in the U.S., but in Canada we were undefeated. And, you know, I was terrified because, you know, I, I didn't want to lose the wrong game at the wrong time. But every other season that I've had, there's always been failure. There's been failure that's, you know, that you can see because it's a, it's a result – Sometimes there's failure because a player that you had a particular vision for doesn't necessarily, you know, fall into place, uh, you know, in the academic realm. Sometimes there's academic failure. Uh, so, that, you know, we're, we're constantly dealing with that. And I think you have to have a healthy approach to understand that it's part of it. It's part of the journey. And you, there has to be a certain level of resilience. Uh, you know, I uh, till this day, my greatest moment in coaching is a game that I lost uh, when I was in my first season at Eastern Commerce. We lost to Oakwood in a city championship game in a double overtime buzzer beater. And I'll never forget that. It was the most devastating loss I've ever had in my career. And um, it was also the one that really challenged me to say, hey, do I, can I really do this? You know, am I, am I built for this? And 
you know, I decided that I was going to continue on. And uh, luckily, I've had a lot more wins than I've had losses. But it certainly challenges us emotionally. It challenges our mental toughness as coaches. Um, it really makes us, in some ways, also just trying to kind of remember why we do it. And, you know, if we only did it because of the outcomes, uh, it would be a torturous existence. I think, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's, it's about relationships. It's about building powerful connection. Those are the rewards of the job. So as long as you can kind of put that into perspective, I think you can overcome the failures. 